what's up guys welcome back to clash with eric you know guys unless you're watching live tournaments and you're seeing every single attack that goes in during a war what ends up on youtube on a lot of youtubers videos are the sensational attacks the weird ones the ones that are completely out of the ordinary and base specific and sometimes over complicated but that's not generally what we actually take into our wars there's actually only about four strategies that clear out the majority of bases and they're all very very simple strategies that you can take into your own wars and i want to show those to you today so make sure you hit that like button hit that subscribe button don't forget to use code eric and let's go dive into this attack number one super golem avalanche you cannot get more simple than this Super Wizards, Golems, and a whole lot of Lightning. Now, I love this attack against these super compact core bases. But with all the major defenses packed around the middle, if you don't get enough of your troops to go into the core, then you're done. You're probably going to one star and you're super screwed over. So we want to take advantage of Lightning to thin out this core, but we're also trying to find a path into the core. And this attack excels at making massive funnels because you can throw so many troops on the flanks and they're going to get good value there while they form huge funnels to push a main force right up the gut of the base there and take that town hall down. But we want to take advantage of the Lightning and these dense cores. So we have all the Infernos packed into the core, and generally this is an attack strategy, regardless of the base layout, we're trying to zap out two multi-Infernos. So we bring in eight Lightning and two Earthquakes. But because we have two Earthquakes and everything is kind of reachable in the core, we can actually overlap those Earthquakes onto like hitting the Expos. So I could have the Expos get hit by both Earthquakes, and I could take them down with two Earthquakes and four Lightning, and uh, I need four light to take out the infernos anyway, so it just kind of works out. And then the eagle is like crossfire right in the middle. So we can grab all of that, and we'll uh, show you right here. I put four on each side, and then I quake everything in the core. And it's okay if I activate the town hall during this attack. I have the freezes to lock it down on the approach, and I'm going to activate it anyways with a log launcher. So it's not a big deal. There's the earthquakes hitting all of those top end structures, and then four lighting on each side. And look at that. We thinned out the base. But we left, our safe, we left ourselves a path into the core, and we left the final Inferno in that path. We can take advantage of the CC and those storages, and we can use that as an entry point to get into the core. So now, golems on both sides with extra golems in the middle. You have five golems. You can spread out that tanking, and you can get huge amounts of coverage for your super wizards. So take advantage of it. Looks like uh, a couple of my super wizards got a uh, snipe off on the flanks there. But watch what the golems do in the middle of the base here. I have the freezes and I can use the freezes to lock up any big threats. And I have an ice golem and a P.E.K.K.A. that comes out of my log launcher. Bunch of giant bombs going off in the middle. And that's kind of another nice part about the lightning. If the lightning is clearing a bunch of the defenses, then if there's any traps between those defenses, then your troops never path over them. So pretty much all of the super wizards died in the flanks. I didn't do a very good job of protecting them, but a lot of what was in the core survived. But these golems just keep going. Like, look how much damage just the golems are doing. They're just going from defense to defense and just hammering them down. Like, look at the bottom flank there. Like those golems are taking out defenses down there. They're actually making some good progress through the base. It's kind of crazy, right? Swag the freeze at the end. Swag the queen ability. They did have a couple of lower level archer towers on this base here, but I mean, it wouldn't have made a difference. We would have crushed it regardless. And that is a simple way to get a three star. Let's go look at one more super, super simple one. And then we'll go into a little bit more complex as we move through the video. Coming in attack number two, Zap, Quake, Mass, Witches. Now we can do this attack strategy the same as we did the Golem Avalanche where we just zap out two multi-infernos and then charge the base with a wall vector or a log launcher. But if a jump gives you access to all the major defenses, then you can go in with a siege barracks instead. And that's why I wanted to show this one here today. So instead of using super wizards, and instead of using five golems, we bring three golems and a whole lot of witches, which is a nice substitute if you don't have super uh, wizards. But if you do and you still want to use witches, you can actually go with a ratio of anywhere from four uh, super wizards and like uh, 14 witches all the way down to like eight and eight. So take your pick there and go in here and smash a base. So look at the jump placement here. It opens up the town hall. 
opens up this Molto Inferno and opens up the Eagle Artillery. Now this Molto Inferno is kind of beaten on his flank down there. So it did weaken up his left flank. That left flank is uh, important that it stays alive, but a couple of witches break to the outside and they're ultimately going to go and reinforce it out there with the golem traveling along the outside of the base. We'd like to have the golems on the outside of the base. If they're on the outside, then they're providing tanking for the witches as they move up. We have the king, we have the P.E.K.K.A. out of the uh, siege barracks, and we have one golem that goes into the base, and that's generally going to be enough to get us through. One poison is the only spell that we have left up after we use the jump in the lightning, so we use that to poison up the CC, and that's it. Even if the queen doesn't go to the CC, you have all the wizards out of the siege barracks, you have the witches, all of those can fight those air targeted CC, and you have a lot of distraction that can keep like electro dragons, super minions, dragons, whatever, distracted, so it's not actually hitting your main force. So look at that, very, very simple, absolutely crushed it. This attack takes down a lot of bases. It's probably one of the ones that I see the most common out of any strategy in the game, even more than the Golem Avalanche. Like I personally love the Golem Avalanche on those super dense core bases because we get a lot of Golems, but this one, very, very good. It gets a little bit more spread out bases because it gives the witches more time to spawn skeletons. And when they engage the next defense, they have another wave of skeletons. And so when everything's a little bit spread out, this one works fantastic. To zap out two multi-infernos, charge the last one, Give yourself access to the major defense like the Eagle Artillery and the Town Hall. Switch it out to a Wall Wrecker or a Log Launcher if you need to, or if you're not comfortable with this style of attack with a log or with the, the Siege Barracks. So let's move on to attack number three. Coming in at number three, we have Smash Attacks. Now, Smash Attacks cover a wide range of different attacks here, but they all follow the same formula. You could come in with Pekkas and Bowlers, you can come in with Yetis and Bowlers, you can come in with Super Witches, you can come in with Super Valkyries. You can have some kind of tanky troop, regardless of which one of them you want to use, and then you back it up with some kind of firepower troop. This one using Pekkas and Super Archers, but we commonly see Pekkas used with Super Wizards and Bowlers. It depends on what you have available and which Super Troop you have active. They're all very, very strong. But the basic setup for how we do this attack here is always the same. We form a funnel wherever there is a weak point in the base where we can clear an entire compartment with a warden walk generally or with a queen walk. If you can control where your queen's going to go, then a queen walk is very, very powerful. But the warden has a nice advantage that he automatically joins with the troops. So Tessas can't throw out the pathing. He'll automatically follow the troops there once you deploy them. So it is very, very strong. If we're coming in opposite of the town hall, we're generally going to come in with a wall wrecker or a log launcher. If we're going into the town hall and our best funnel point is right next to the town hall, then we'll use a siege barracks to help secure the funnel and we'll use wall breakers and jumps to get us into the base. Both are very, very viable options. So once we're into the core of the base, like he even has Yetis come out of his uh, log launcher. So he's, he's got more tanking in the middle as he works his way through, but the log launcher doesn't open up the whole base. He has to have the jump spell to finish connecting it and then he can work his way across and he can take it down. So the king forms the other half of the funnel. So warden walk forms one half or the queen walk. The king forms the other half and we generally don't want the king going into the base. Why? Well, the king likes to steal the healers and heroes get less healing value off of healers than uh, regular troops do. So we want the P.E.K.K.A.s to pick up the healers or the super riches or the yetis or the whatever is our tanky troop that goes into the base. We want them to be holding the healers and then our squishy troops, our firepower troops, or in the case of super riches, they're the tank and the firepower at the same time. They're a nice little option there. A lot of people like to use those. Um, we keep it all protected. We keep it all protected and we just charge our way on through. Uh, super archers have a nice added bonus that they are a little bit tanky themselves. They actually have a pretty decent life pool. So if they get separated from the P.E.K.K.A.s, they can uh, keep on going and they can outrange a lot of defenses here and they can keep on moving through. So there we go. Kind of an interesting one here. A little bit uh, out of the ordinary doing P.E.K.K.A.s and super archers, but it all follows the exact same formula. Smash attacks. Gotta love them. Let's move on to number four. All right, getting off the ground and into the skies. Coming in at number four, we got Zap Quake Dragons. Now, this space, pause it for one second. 
Why did he put the earthquake right there? Why didn't he hit the air defenses? Well, if you can save a spell, save a spell. The primary thing that we're looking for during this attack is value next to air defenses. Whether that be arch towers, air sweepers, those are a little bit cheaper. Those only take two lightning and a quake to take down. But if we can get an inferno, we're generally going to want to try to do so. And if we can conserve spells while we're doing it and make so that the earthquakes can span across, even though I could throw in one earthquake to hit all of these up here and use two lightning to overlap from the inferno onto the air defense, two to go from the inferno to the arch shower, I could clear that entire compartment. But I'd rather conserve a spell to help me get through the other air defense that I leave up on the base later on. So we're going to use the earthquake to span across and then we only have to bring one earthquake instead of two. And then I can take out the air defense on both compartments and I'll just leave the arch tower up just a little bit weakened, right? I actually can uh, go in with a couple of balloons and I can go snipe it off later on the attack if I want to because there's now nothing guarding it over there. There's also nothing stopping the heroes and we naturally formed a funnel for the heroes to go after a high value target for themselves. They can go after an inferno, they can go after the town hall, they can go after the eagle artillery or the queen. Something of value there, but we want to make sure that they, can, they stay away from the CC. We don't want the heroes to pull the CC. If the heroes pull the CC, then they're not getting the value that we uh, could get out of them. And we can easily fight the CC with the dragons. The dragons have a lot of firepower and they're all grouped up. You don't need a poison. You can power through whatever CC comes out of there. And then if we're going right into an air defense, we'll throw a hound in front of the dragons. We'll rage them up as we engage the CC and as we engage the queen. And that'll make so they have a ton of firepower. Pop that ward ability while you're raged. While those dragons are under the uh, rage and they're invincible, have them surge forward and hopefully clear a lot of the traps. Now, for a siege machine selection on this one, we can go with a stone slammer. In this one, he had access to a stone slammer to get it into an inferno. It was uh, pretty trapped up there, so it went down pretty fast, and he had to open up, but that's all right. It formed the funnel for the dragons a little bit further, and if we're coming in and the heroes didn't take out the town hall, and like, maybe there's a sweeper pointing at the town hall, and it's not really easy access for the dragons, then you can come with the dragons on the opposite side of the base, and you can have a blimp cross through the dragons protected by the ward ability search all the way across the base and snipe that town hall off there's a lot of different strategies and if you guys are subscribed to the channel here you can see a lot of those strategies in tournaments on the daily and uh, we try to mix it up here i can't always cover every single town hall every single day it's just i don't have the time for it and if you guys want to see more content i actually do post on my new amazon game on account you can uh, go down in the description of the video or in the link and you can come, uh, check out some more Town Hall 12 attack strategies. I'm going to go post right now and you can uh, get some extra content that you maybe didn't, wouldn't have got otherwise and you can learn some more strategies. Otherwise, stick around and in just a second, there's going to be a Town Hall 12 playlist popping up right over there after the bees fly. And so thank you for uh, coming and watching. Hope you learned something. Make sure you hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to use code ERIC. And I'll see you guys in just a minute when you uh, go check out my uh, Amazon game on. Take it easy, guys. I'll see you in the next one.